Oh, it's sunny out. It is sunny out. I can't even open my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. You should have wore a hat with a bill. I know, it's spring though, so it's like, it's sunny, and yet it could also be cold enough that you need still a stocking cap. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Tomarosa. Today we're gonna to talk about our cows and uh, some early spring grazing and uh, calving. And now that we got the camera out, the wind came up. Mm -hmm. That's about how it goes. Grazing has been going really well for us this spring. It's definitely a stark contrast to uh, last year. Uh, we actually started grazing the earliest that uh, we've ever started grazing here and that was March 27th. So thus far we have not actually grazed any part of our farm more than once yet. We're about done with what we call the racetrack which is our main pastures uh, that we have easy access to and from the barn. Um, but uh, yeah, the cows are loving the grass. We had a really cool April. It's been cool and wet, which is great for the grass. It hasn't been growing super fast, but it's been keeping up with them. And uh, the cows love it. The yearlings love it. You know, the yearlings kind of got cheated last year out of uh, nice grazing. But uh, it's just so glorious to see them out on grass. We love it. As part of our grazing, uh, we still move our cows every single day. So we have good perimeter fencing around our pastures, and then we also have some permanent laneways and such. But for within the paddocks, we use the portable reels and the step-in posts, and those work really well for us. Uh, quick and easy to set up, and it keeps the cows moving. Moving. Let's talk about our cows. So we basically have like five grown-ups and then we have the three yearlings from last year. The one right here, of course, Buttercup. And then we have behind her, Daisy. And to the left of her is Rose. And then with her head down and the white splotch on her back is Carnation. And then this is Dodie. She was the first heifer ever born on our farm. And then we have the three yearlings. Arrow leaf there with the white splotches. On the fence line is dandelion. And beside dandelion is sunflower, who's taken to taking up the uh, rear of the line whenever they're going somewhere. So Stacy started calling her slow flower. But let's talk about Dodie and Buttercup. As you may remember, we bred our five to have five calves this spring but we're only going to have three calves so what happened is first buttercup went back into heat starting in january and sometimes you can have some amorous symptoms while they're bred but we wanted to double check so we did a blood test and it did confirm she was no longer pregnant and from what was in her blood they could tell she lost a calf around about last October, November, and they were bred in August. So that would have been in the uh, first trimester. Cows are like humans. They have a nine month gestation. Since we're a seasonal dairy, we have left Buttercup open. We're gonna breed her when we breed all the animals this summer. Now on to Dodie. Dodie was also bred in August and she appeared to still be pregnant. We were waiting for her to calve about mid-May, but a couple of weeks ago, she actually started to pass placenta, which if you know how birthing normally goes, you normally pass the calf and then the placenta comes out. So we're very concerned. We called the vet. We had the vet come out, do some blood work, check. We, we checked there was not a calf in her, so that was another thing. We checked to make sure there wasn't anything out in the field uh, we were very not sure what was going on with her but she was otherwise healthy she was eating and chewing cud and staying with the herd and didn't seem you know no fever everything else was fine so on sunday actually mother's day she passed the placenta in the barn and stacy brought it in and we washed it up and it had a mummified fetus in it we sent it to our local university washington state university with some blood samples and 
based upon the size of the fetus, it also looks like it was lost about last October, November. It's a rare occurrence, but sometimes they can stay inside and they get passed later. So now we had Dodie and Buttercup lose a calf last November. Their blood tests show that they had actually been exposed to blue tongue. Now blue tongue is a viral infection that primarily decimates like white-tailed deer. And in this area, it's not endemic. However, last year, because of the uh, severe drought, it was endemic in this area, and we actually did find two dead deer on our farm. In deer, it causes like hemorrhagic death, like pretty suddenly within like 24 hours. And other ruminants, because uh, it's passed by bites of these little midges, uh, it can have some symptoms. You can have fever, you can have, you know, extreme uh, wetness of the eyes and reduction in milk and everything. We never saw any symptoms in our animals last fall for anything. And uh, the other thing it could cause in cows is early abortion. So since all the other tests came back not showing any reason they would have aborted, we are now thinking that since they are positive for blue tongue, that it was blue tongue which is very, very, just very interesting and strange and nothing that we can control or vaccinate for. So that's what happened with our first two calves. I just add that overall though, they're, they're in good health now, they're cycling and, um, you know, we'll, we'll have them checked, uh, but otherwise we plan to breed them again. Right. So the calves that we are waiting for. First, we have Daisy. Daisy is due on the 26th, so in four days, she's already showing signs that she's getting close. She's uh, bagging up her udder. She's uh, very loose in her rear area and having clear, you know, clear straw colored mucus, which is all good things we like to see. I bumped her calf a couple weeks ago too. And she just looks uncomfortable. See? So we're waiting on her. And if you remember, Daisy didn't get bred the first year we had her. The second year, which was last year, she had a stillborn, which was inconclusive for that. And so this year would be her first calf. We're very excited about her being successful and being a mama. Due on June 3rd is Rose. Now Rose is a super awesome cow. She has had two calves all by herself very quickly out in the field. Very good milk producer, very strong, very hardy. And we're very excited about when she'll have and she's showing all the good signs too and then next we're waiting on carnation carnation is due in mid-june she's also produced uh, two healthy calves and is also starting to bag up and show healthy calving symptoms so we're excited about those three coming on we've had a lot of people asking us for milk and no milk yet hi buttercup how are you doing How's it going? She's like, oh, it's hard. I gotta come out. I get fresh grass every day. I got clean access to water. I come and go to the barn whenever I want. They come and they pet on me. Uh, I get to raise my babies. I guess I'm doing okay. Thanks for joining us on the Tomarosas. We gave you an update on our herd. Should be calving shortly and be back in the milk. All right, so from me and Stacy and Buttercup, we'll see you next time. Are you, are you showing them our riding lawnmowers? <laughs> yes. They're also autonomous. <laughs>